How you guys doing? Chris Ignato here, and you're watching Nature Now. So in this episode of my Spotted Lanternfly series, I'm going to talk to you about the final, and quite possibly the most dangerous stage in the lanternfly's life cycle. And that is the egg mass. Have a look. You were saying you, the yellow ones seem to appear larger, right? Yeah. But if you look, right, you can even see the yellow through their wings. Even their wings themselves are more of a yellowish tinge than these ones. So. Oh yeah, I see it on that one. Yeah, but is that just the yellow showing through the wing? I think. It appears that the females are larger than the males and have large abdomens with a lot of yellow on them. While the males seem to have smaller abdomens and also appear darker in coloration. I've noticed that the adults often stand about with their wings open, exposing the vibrant coloration underneath. I think it is the females who do this, but I'm not sure. One thing I know for sure is, when I start seeing a lot of them doing this, egg masses show up soon afterwards. These lantern flies are all over the place now, right? They are definitely in the stage of laying eggs. And I'm already starting to see multiple egg masses. The upper portions of the tree are filled with these lantern flies, which obviously, I suspect, most of the egg masses are going to be in the top of the tree. Or in the higher branches, I mean. But check this out. It's, it's crazy. This is what the egg masses look like. Spotted lantern flies are not just an agricultural problem, but an all out commerce problem. The USPS, FedEx, and other delivery services are even being trained to search their crates and vehicles for egg masses. So as you can see, their egg masses can and often do take on various looks and appearances. From the very young, glossy, new egg masses to the middle-aged egg masses that are somewhat gray and have a cracked up dry appearance. And then you have the very old and developed egg masses which have those little cylinder shapes with a ridge-like structure in the middle. The worst thing is, they can lay their eggs on anything. They don't need the host plant to lay their eggs. They can lay it on shipping containers, the sides of buildings, cars, trucks, boats, luggage, and of course, firewood. Now what happens is, these lanternflies will feed on the sap and phloem layers of trees and host plants, and it causes it to bleed out. They feed on lots of that stuff, but there's a high water content, so they excrete a lot to retain the nutrients. That's a honeydew that comes out of them, and it can form mounds and piles and mats across the ground around the trees and stuff. That attracts bees, wasps, ants, and all sorts of other things. But the worst thing is, is it forms a layer of mold that can often kill the tree. It's impenetrable, and it's just a lot of trouble. It's very sticky and unattractive, too. Their back legs get weird. I notice a lot of them, it looks like their back legs are broken. They just dangle oh, them. Oh yeah, they're crossed over. Yeah, and they've been like that for weeks. Do you think they're dying or do you think the back end is getting so plump they go in a weird position? Maybe, that might be it. Strange. As you may have heard, the Tree of Heaven does take on a very important role in the life cycle of the spotted lanternfly. However, it is not a crucial part of their life cycle because they have been seen that they can actually rely on other species of trees and plants at different stages of their life cycle. There doesn't always have to be a tree of heaven present in their vicinity for them to have a complete life. Now another thing that's really difficult is the tree of heaven is an invasive species. It comes from the same part of the world that the spotted lanternflies come from. Now you can try to cut down these trees of heaven, right? But if you don't get the entire root with them, they're famous for shooting up tons of sprouts and stuff from the remaining roots. These trees are hard to eradicate. Same with the lantern flies. Now removing the invasive tree of heaven, or just allowing the male trees to remain behind as bait trees, might just help us gain the upper hand in controlling this spotted lantern fly invasion. We are starting to learn some successful strategies in winning the war against these insects. 
But I must say, among many methods, there's actually a team of scientists in the University of Kentucky that is exploring RNA interference, or RNAi, as an insecticide that silences the expression of genes that are crucial for functions such as walking or flying. It would actually be a very species-specific insecticide, and has actually worked with cornworms and stuff in the past. Now unfortunately, spotted lanternflies are really dangerous to crops and other agricultural industries. In some parts of the United States, they have already wiped out over 90% of grape populations. They go for hops. They've actually, now they're being witnessed to go for corn, you know, soy, all sorts of uh, different plant and agricultural things, including the timber industry. They <laughs> have no problems with black walnut and maple trees. It's just such a threat and they're spreading like wildfire. In 2014, they, they were just a couple of counties, if that. They've spread well into New York, Virginia, Pennsylvania, many counties in Pennsylvania, and it's just a serious threat, okay? They showed up in Korea. It just took several years for them to spread across the entire country. And to this day, in 2018, they are still a major pest in Korea. So, <laughs> Now when you see these egg masses, unfortunately the best thing you can do is destroy them. No matter what stage they're in, just destroy the egg masses, okay? There are many ways to do so and it's just the best thing you can do, I hate to say it. Thanks a lot for watching and remember if you like this video, be sure to check out this video over here that YouTube has selected specifically for you based on your watch time.